This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 508, Start with $100, by Chris Reining of chrisreining.com. And I'm your host and narrator, Dan. I'm here each weekday reading to you from some of the best personal finance blogs on the planet. We take all this great content and put it into podcast form for you. And I'm gonna keep this intro really short for you today. So let's get right to Chris's post as we optimize your life. Start with $100 by Chris Reining of chrisreining.com. It turns out African safaris aren't cheap. You're either spending a lot to sleep at a fancy lodge or a lot sleeping in a tent. I slept in a tent, but then you realize the only thing separating you from the lions is a thin layer of nylon. I thought I was gonna die. But it wasn't until the safari was over and I was in Zanzibar I was even close to dying. You see, I was putting on my t-shirt and put my hand through a rusty metal ceiling fan. It only took 45 minutes to drive to the nearest hospital for stitches. And even though I was convinced I was getting tetanus, I never felt guilty about spending thousands of dollars to take this trip. Why not? Because I've always said, you shouldn't feel guilty spending money on the things that really matter to you. And for me, that's travel. Plus, I can never find studies that say buying stuff makes you happy, but I can find studies proving experiences make you happier than stuff. Now, most personal finance experts will tell you that you need to stop spending money even on the things that matter to you. A coffee? You can't afford it. A night out with friends? Sorry, you're staying home and making a condiment sausage like this person. Quote, when he feels like splurging, he will buy a pork shoulder, which is a lot of meat, for about seven to $10. He cuts off all the meat and grinds it along with free condiments from a cafeteria into a cylinder shape that he wraps with shopping bags from a store. Then he freezes it. When he wants some, he slices some pieces off like patties and sautés them, in its own oil, of course. This will last him months, end quote. I don't want you making condiment sausages. I want you to have the freedom to live your life the way you want. In fact, financial freedom was my goal about six years ago, and I really had no idea how to accomplish it. But I eventually learned how, and here's what I discovered. Most people act differently than wealthy people. People who earn $50,000 spend 50,000, and people who earn 75,000 spend 75,000, and people who earn 100,000 spend 100,000, and on and on. This is why most people live paycheck to paycheck, even the ones earning a lot of money. But here's what wealthy people know. Money isn't something you spend, it's something you leverage. And if you focus on earning more money and you focus on spending less than you're earning, then what you'll find out is you have money you can leverage. Earning more money. The best way to earn more money is to take your existing job and get paid more to do it. And you can do this by getting a raise. But here's what you might be thinking. What if they say no? What if they think I'm being greedy? What if they fire me just for asking? I used to think that stuff too. But if you're a top performer and you know you're valuable, then you need to make sure you're fairly compensated. I wrote about this before. So maybe you can't get a raise for whatever reason. That doesn't mean you can't earn more money because anyone can make an extra thousand dollars a weekend if they develop some skills people are willing to pay for. Here are some ideas. App development, book illustrations, programming, video animation, website development. You can learn all those things online for free or cheap. Check out Code Academy, Creative Live, Khan Academy, lynda.com, and Udemy. And some colleges have even opened up their curriculums. I have a friend who became an app developer by taking Stanford's free class. Key takeaway, focus on earning more money because there's really no limit. Spending less than you earn. Most people buy things they don't need with money they don't have to impress people they don't like. And once I stopped doing that, I went from spending $48,501 a year to spending $35,715, 25% less. You spend the most money on housing, transportation, and food, so start looking at cuts there. And day to day, you can try out this philosophy from Derek Sivers. Quote, if I'm not saying yeah about something, then say no. Meaning, when deciding whether to commit to something, if I feel anything less than, wow, that would be amazing, absolutely, yeah, then my answer is no. End quote. Okay, he's talking about how to spend your time, but you can apply it to your money too. So every time you're making a decision about how to spend money, it has to be a yeah or it's a no. And for me, that looked like this. Should I spend $1,000 a month flying airplanes as a hobby? No. Should I buy one of those $9.50 ultra organic chocolate bars made by some Brooklyn brand? No. Should I go out for lunch every day to that Italian restaurant where they cover the tables in white paper? No. Should I get that incredibly expensive coffee where it takes nine minutes for some guy to make it using a bunch of test tubes? No. 
Should I travel the world and force myself to live outside my comfort zone and get lost all the time and cut my hand in a ceiling fan and have to ask strangers for help getting to the hospital? Hell yeah. Key takeaway, spend on things that matter to you and cut out everything else. Using leverage. Okay, you're earning more money, you're only spending on the things that matter to you, so now you're ready for leverage. And what does leverage look like? Well, Elon Musk made $165 million when he sold PayPal to eBay. He could have retired at 30 or whatever, but instead he decided to put all his money into three companies, SolarCity, SpaceX, and Tesla. And now he's worth billions. That's leverage. Or take Jeff Bezos. He was recently asked if Amazon will ever make a profit. Quote, so it's kind of like we built this lemonade stand, you know, 20 years ago. The lemonade stand has become very profitable over time, but we also decided to use our skills and the assets that we've acquired over time to open up a hamburger stand and a hot dog stand and so on and so on. So we're investing in new initiatives, end quote. That's leverage. You see, the key to using leverage is investing what you have in stocks or businesses or yourself. And if you do that over and over again, it'll start looking like this. Start with $100. Invest that $100 in skills or assets that will eventually net you $1,000. Invest that $1,000 in skills or assets that will eventually net you $10,000. Invest that $10,000 in skills or assets that will eventually net you $100,000. Invest that $100,000 in skills or assets that will eventually net you a million, and so on. Key takeaway, start with $100 and keep leveraging up to become wealthy. You just listened to the post titled Start With $100 by Chris Reining of chrisreining.com. And I'll keep this ending nice and short for you today, but before we go, it would be great if you could come by oldpodcast.com slash support and check out some of the different ways that you can support our show. Most of them are totally free, like simply sharing the podcast with a friend, writing a rating and review, and more. We would very much appreciate it. Again, that link is oldpodcast.com slash support. And that's it for today. Thanks as always for being here and listening. I will see you in the Thursday show tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.